What's up, beautiful people? I'm Nathaniel Pearl. And I'm Sam Sheva. And welcome to Curious Chimps Podcast, a show where we explore the infinite complexities of the human experience. We do not endorse anything illegal. So please, consult the doctors, do your research, and for the love of all that is holy, be safe. All right, let's talk about drugs. Curious, curious, curious chimps. Yo, yo, yo. What's up, brother? Hey, man. How you doing? We're fucking here again. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Oh, shit, man. Yeah, it's been a journey. We just... What's the... What uh, what what if any explanation is there as to why we just haven't uploaded anything for, like, three months? <laughs> you know what? Everyone goes through waves in life, and that's it. Don't really need to explain. You just hear back. That's some, that's some fortune cookie bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what are we going to... We just had life. Life, life yeah. lives on, and we're living with it. And things got in the way. Things were busy, and that's it. But we're back, committed, and eh. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> you know, it's funny though. Like you know, you know when you get like you feel guilty, yeah, and then you do, and then you stop yourself even more. That's an interesting one. So just the fact that we're back is like a great sign. But that's it. There's a momentum to stopping too. It's like yeah. there's a momentum when you're doing something, but then when you stop, it doesn't get harder. But there's like more layers of i guess resistance. excuses or re- resistance is a good word and yeah. they just kind of pile up i never thought of that like imagine doing something and then stopping you're going to ha- you're going to know exactly what the resistance is it's almost like you know like your your excuses are stronger mm. and that didn't really happen to us now we were just like no not now not now not now and then finally today was a good day so we yeah. just fucking jumped on it yeah. Bop, bop, bop. I think I'm going to increase my volume. I want to hear my sultry voice. On the headphones? Yeah. You said the levels were good, right? Fuck it. Is it ear number one? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Better? Oh, wow. That's really like like a little lower? Slightly lower? Yeah. Huh? So, Bleh. I guess we have more to talk about because we've been gone for so long. Uh, f- Cambo. Oh, f- let's just start with that. <laughs> so I had a Cambo experience. We we had a podcast on it with Angie a while back. Let's see if we can guess the number right. I think it was episode... Uh, I want to guess 30s. I'm thinking 47. I'm not going to... We don't know. We'll, well just find she out She was later. in that whole mix when we had like a lineup with Mathieu and then Chanel and then... It was like a... It was a heavy, a heavy few... Uh, heavy week of recording, I remember that time. That was with her. Yeah, I do remember that time. Yeah. Wait, what number did you say? It was. I thought 30s. Shit. I don't know. You might be right, bro. I don't know. I want to say like 33. Jeez. Something like that. You know what's crazy is now, because I have that book idea. I'll reveal it on the podcast eventually. But um, as I'm planning it, I realize that we have such a wealth of uh, contacts because of this podcast. Like, I shot up, um, I called Greg Lake. We had like a 15 minute conversation. And How he was he gi- doing? he's doing great. We should get him back on at some point. Um, so he was giving me some tips on the book, and then I asked Charles for some tips. He gives me some tips, and then I asked Drew. Like, I'm just like I, if we didn't have this podcast, I would have never known these guys. And they're all like uh, self published. Yeah, yeah, it's really fucking useful. It's crazy. Yeah. So I never <coughs> finished. Um, Greg's, I got halfway through. And then sorry, I'm such a fucking lazy bastard. <laughs> <laughs> then Greg Miller, the artist, he's doing the book cover. Which is gonna be really cool. That's true. That yeah. guy's. I love all these people. We got to get him <laughs> back because he's he just got signed with uh, Warner Brothers. That so dude's just up and up and yeah. up, man. He just keeps yeah. getting work. It's amazing. Well, I mean, it's well like deserved. Not surpri- yeah, exactly. He's yeah. just a hardworking, talented man. Yeah. But he, it's uh, it's like it's fun to talk to these people, and it's like, I still have this childlike like. I don't understand how to like be successful at all. Mm. And like they're just people. Like I just talk to them and they're human beings and I'm <laughs> like, "Oh, I have no excuse. I just have yeah. to do work." Well, what is success? Well, it's first of all, it's temporary. It's full of failure. The opposite of success is not failure. So that there's things like that that yeah. I need to just, like understand. But what I mean is that like that's all memes. What you're saying is like just like Oh no, I mean that shit though. I, I get that it's like sound bitey a little, but mm. it's like for real the i'm i'm kind of deflating myself i guess mm. like it's not it's temporary it's like it's good for sure they're doing good but yeah. like they're that's just the fruit of their labor it's like so direct to to what they've uh accomplished what they've practiced and what they've seeked out actively but that's it and the main thing of these people is just they chose a craft 
Greg Miller is a great example because it's an actual craft and he just stuck with it and just kept working on it, fine tuning it and varnishing it. And now it's. Yeah, he's a literal artist. Yeah. It's funny how everything's called art, but then painting is, co- is art. I just want to see a newbie mistake if we're recording. We're recording there, I checked. Uh, and I guess the lappy is plugged in as well. Well. <laughs> Double, triple check, man. I like that it's in the recording also. I don't want to cut it out. <laughs> because we, we don't. Uh, God forbid people think we know what we're doing. Yeah. That would be dangerous. So, uh, back to Campbell. Campbell it up. Yeah, honestly, bro. Because I don't know if I ever told you about the experience. Last time we talked about it, you said... We'll get into it on the podcast, mm. but you said you were just violently ill for like <laughs> 12 hours <laughs> <laughs> for, yeah, 24 hours. for a, at least 24 hours. Dude, it was so... Um, like no sleep? like and Just migraine, sweating. Like I felt like I fucking had COVID or something. Just like destroyed. But I think that was good in some weird way. For sure. Uh, yeah. You must have felt amazing after, first of all. No. <laughs> There wasn't a moment of, you <laughs> no. just went back to baseline? <laughs> just back to baseline. You didn't have like that, Something. oh my God, I feel so good, like no. that relief? That's what I was hoping to get there. Wow, I'm surprised. I felt something changed, I just didn't know what, but just back to baseline. I guess it's just literal poison. You were just like, this is, your body Angie was like, might get nope. mad at you for that, but I <laughs> it's definitely poison. Well, okay, it's, it's <laughs> like technically a toxin. Yeah. Like it's literally, I guess poison you would, you would ingest but it like yeah. something a toxin would go in the blood but yeah but a poison from a snake venom is going into your blood as well oh no venom is blood okay i don't care i don't remember the i well love so how i try to be technical i'm half asleep <laughs> i have I'm so fucking sleep well drive. well i'll tell you how she applies it so ceremony starts you have to drink this was fucking work in its own before even taking the cambo you have to drink two liters of water 15 minutes before that's a lot of water <laughs> Just so you have something to puke. And you just, you chugging it. I'm just like, okay, fuck, it's two liters. Dude. I'm just going at Is it. Is it salt water? No, regular water. Okay. But like two liters in a 15 minute timeline is not easy. That hurts my head just thinking about. And after so. After one liter, like. <laughs> after like, if you chug like two glasses of water, you already feel, unless you're really thirsty, it's already a lot, you know? Yeah. And then, so two glasses of water is 500 milliliters. So then that's times two is four. And then another, so eight glasses of water in 15 minutes. Yeah, so just that was work, but it's like that's doable, right? So you drink the water, and then uh, she started the ceremony. There was three of us, so she burns. She she decided how many holes to burn, I guess. So she burned. Uh, she chose for me to burn five, the guy next to me three, and then the guy furthest from me six. So she just intuitively chose. Um, the guy who did three, I think it's because he had ayahuasca. He did ayahuasca a week before, so he was pretty open already. So anyway, so she burns these holes. You can see my little... You see that? I have like a little tattoo. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Little you guys won't be able to see it, but it's like... S- I have five dots that are scars, basically. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Huh? It's my first tat. <laughs> <laughs> little scarification. Yeah. As, uh, just down the line, like little... Almost like pimples, like just yeah, there's just like five holes in the. So she she burns it. It doesn't hurt. It's a burn, and then it's like this paste that she mixes with water, and that's the the secretion, and then she smears it on each hole. And uh, when she put the first one on, I remember I felt like like a heartbeat, like it was going faster. And then she put another one. I'm just sitting like meditative, you know, like eyes closed posture. Uh, she does all five, and I'm just sitting there. And I think she leaves it on for like 15 minutes and then she removes it. I'm just sitting like this and I, f- I kid you not, this was interesting. I felt like heat in my blood veins, in my, in my blood vessels. I felt them going all around my body, like circulating. And I felt like, like just like everything was just like fire was going everywhere. And then I started feeling really specifically on my left side, the artery that goes up to the head. There's a name for it. You remember the, that artery? I forgot what it's called. Vena cava. Vena cap no, that's I don't the, remember. That's the <laughs> that's the other one. That's the Venus return. No, it's like a in French. I think it's like aorta. Sim- the o- yeah, no, it's near the show. aorta. It's off the aorta. The carotid the chiro- uh, carotid artery. Yeah, I think it's one of those. I don't but in we'll Google it in after. osteo, the French term was like uh, la l'huile or something. La l'huile. 
like Willy or something. It was like a, a name. Oh, no, I forgot. I know which one you're talking y- about. Y- okay. I learned it in massage class. Okay, I yeah. don't remember it now. I think it's like a person's name or something. Anyway. The fucking John Vane. <laughs> <laughs> so I felt Jeffrey. <laughs> <laughs> I f- yeah, I think you're right. Something like that. So <laughs> I felt... Jeffrey's vein. Like, really painful at that artery. I'm like, oh. And I'm just like there. I'm like, oh, fuck, that one hurts. I'm like, I felt like it literally pushed through plaque or something. And then it went to my brain, and it just the purge just started coming out, man. And it was like yellow cloudy like uh, my eyes were closed for most of it but i looked afterwards but it was like uh it looks like a yellow cloudy like pus a bit i don't even it's like, like off white or like more green or yellow yellow like like a bright like a like bright bile. yellow had a bile vibe was it very acidic? no it didn't look like bile because it was cr- it looked like you cracked an egg in hot oil okay yeah, so it's like you know, <laughs> I don't like know. I don't know what that was <laughs> in your body, but I know I could picture it now. Yeah, so it was just like that. It was just clouds in this water because you drink so much water, so it was just puking out the water, and then these clouds of fucking egg yolk. And were you par- dizzy or like I, my eyes were closed? It was just like I was in the movement. I just like that purge movement. You just got nauseous. Like there wasn't dizziness. Like a just n- yeah, like dizzy. Like not dizzy, just s- like ill. Just feel like you have to reject, reject yeah. whatever's in. And apparently my eyes were super red, like like exploding out almost. I had no recollection. It was really, my whole experience was me and my bucket. <laughs> It'd be funny if Angie was like, <laughs> 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 like, i never seen that before, bro. <laughs> That's fucking cool. Yeah. <laughs> and you just got these demon eyes, you know, like. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if she was just being nice, but she's like, you're handling it like a pro. Good, keep going. I'm like, sure. I'm I think she knows you and it's like, you had to go ham. Yeah. Like if there was any doubt that you could have taken it, taken more. You would have felt like you were robbed a little bit, you know. Well, like that's it. So the, when the guy got six, I was like in my head, I'm like, <laughs> like that. Oh, the six guy. Yeah, like, like <laughs> the six. Uh, in my head, I'm like, why do I get five? <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like fucking croaking over there. <laughs> never mind. Never mind. Angie knows what's up. That's just because that's just the way I am, though. It's like if there's a limit, I'll go to it. But I didn't know the limit because I was I was full trust into her. Mm-hmm. So when she gave me five, and then the guy three in my head, I'm like, yeah, she gave me a big amount. And then I hear six, I'm like, fuck. <laughs> A little ego pinch, yeah, but she's a, a she's a wizard, man. She knows what's up, yeah, one way or the other. So yeah, so I purged, 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 and then it went away. But I just felt so weak and sick and headache, and <laughs> that part just stayed for twenty four hours. I went home. I was sweating, uh, migraine. Like I texted her, I'm like, "Is it normal?" And she's like, "Yeah, it could happen." I think what happened was I was there was such a cleanse, and my body was so uh, polluted from stress and from just like sugar and all that kind of stuff. It just needed to like a uh, full recalibration. Yeah. I'm just so shocked. I can't believe that you didn't have like that that like counterbalance good feeling. Like you just you just di- like you just woke up one day and felt less shitty. You yeah. were like I'm back to normal. Yeah, thank God. <laughs> Not even thank God, just like Ugh. Yeah. Surprising. But I get like this is this is like the I don't know, like the a friend of mine called it like the jungle vaccine, you know, like this fucking supercharges your immune system, mm. which I have no, I've never read a study, but like this is just one of those ancient technologies. Like I somewhere emotionally, I have a lot of trust for it. I'm mm. just that kind of person. I don't know. So to to see, I'd love to see how you, you didn't get sick much in the past anyway, to be honest, but like, do yeah. you feel any difference like in joint pain or something random, your vitiligo? Like, is there anything that, that. Yeah, uh, really. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> she just <laughs> stared at me. It's kind of cool. She has way more room now. Yeah, she seems cozy. Yeah, she, before she was like crowded. Uh, I don't even know if they know, but we extended the podcast room. It's pretty big now. Yeah, it, it kind of like we were saying, it kind of looks the same, but it's definitely more comfortable for us. It's like less wires. When we have a guest, it's going to be so much more comfortable. Yeah, it's just nicer, and you have a fucking sauna. In your <laughs> apartment, like a boss. Yeah, I have like a... This room is just ever-evolving. <laughs> yeah, for, for the listeners, maybe I'll post... Well, I put it on Instagram already, but I have we have a, f- I have a fucking steam room box. Yeah. And it's like, it fits two people. You got to try it, man. W- hopefully, maybe after the show, we'll, we'll do like 20 minutes or 15 minutes or another time, but it's... If we got time, I'm feeling uh, more into it. Speaking of limits, is like, I had an extra heater from the previous sun I had. So I added it into it. So now there's two steamers in there. So it just... You're such a crackhead. <laughs> I love it. You're like the opposite of me. Like, how are we friends? 
I just want to like sleep. <laughs> 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 like you make me tired, like in a good way. I just like he's taking whatever yeah. I need to do. He's doing it already. Yeah. That's insane, man. Why would you do that to yourself? And it's funny because when I bought it from the guy, I'm like, I'm like, oh, this gets hot, but I, I need to make it hotter. And he's like looking at me like, are you fucking crazy? <laughs> but is that more of like a spot heat and like a dry heat? Whereas, whereas this is designed to be a steam? It's Yeah, it's a steam regardless, like when okay. I first got it. No, but, no, but yeah, like your your second heater there from the it's first It's a steam one. as well. Oh, you So there's just double steam. <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> It's this container. It's basically like an oval container, and there's a stove. If you want to just simplify it, it's a stove that boils water in this confinement, and it just steams up. Is it convection or whatever it's called there? Like it's a magnetic? No, it's a you total stove. It's like a... You just burn yourself? Yeah. Like That's I've horrible. <laughs> what the fuck, bro? Yeah, so... <laughs> it's just an enclosed and then the oven. other <laughs> Yeah, and then the other one is basically a kettle. It just boils the water. So it's just this, <laughs> this like. I love how we think we've come so far technologically, and then it's like it's just a fucking <laughs> kettle. <laughs> you just it's get a in stove in a box. That's you it. You just cook yourself in a fucking plastic room. Yeah. In a chamber, a coffin of steam. I added also a um, diffuser, so I just put essential oils in and just yeah. diffuses the whole the whole uh, get box. Some peppermint in there and just burn your eyes. Oh yeah, you like were asking me about man. you were asking me about uh, immunity. After the Campbell. In general, anything you've yeah. noticed? Uh, well, I haven't been sick since, which is nice. Did your dick fall off? <laughs> 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 that I won't disclose. <laughs> I will neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> no, um, honestly... Check out my OnlyFans. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> honestly, um, what I did notice, coming back to baseline, I was way more calm after the Campbell. Just like super calm. That was about Interesting. it. Yeah. You feel emotionally stable. It felt like a lot of gut bacteria got ejected. A For lot of that candida, you know? Just reset. Yeah. And I just felt like... Cause in the cartridge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. But yeah, because a lot of that gut bacteria can dictate the way you think, you know? there The whole sugar crave and the mm -hmm. sweet tooth, uh, salt and salt the tooth. And the fact that... The there's just a hundred thousand, hundred million neurons in the intestinal tract, so there's definitely a deep connection to gut bacteria and mind. And the the whole gut brain thing, mm -hmm. you know, that's like been the fucking talk of research for like the last yeah. decade. Like it's l you're literally making like dopamine and shit in here, yeah. And then it literally dictates like well your mood, but like your that will your decisions, your yeah, like your your cravings, your desires, your motives, yeah, your motive. Like that's yeah. fucked up, man. It's crazy. It's like a part of you that is governed by things that are not you genetically yeah. at all, that are literally like foreign bacteria. Yeah, yeah, are strongly like puppeting you. It's really odd. Like yeah. you picture something controlling you being bigger, <laughs> but this is smaller, and they live inside you. And they're feeding, and they need to eat t in order to survive all these different microbiomes and all these things. And they might kill you. They might jo put you in the wrong direction. This seems like an analogy for, yeah. for a life on Earth. <laughs> well, <laughs> they're going to win the battle either way. I don't know, but they fight each other because they're yeah. competing for resources, and they promote, they make you crave what they need. But what I'm saying is at the end of the day, no one comes out of this alive, so they will, whatever bacteria is in there, obviously will probably die when the host dies, but some will just... Be the the back eat you will become <laughs> the the fungus that just eats <laughs> through you, and you go right back to the source. The fungus among us. Yeah. Oops. I read something fucking terrifying, or maybe I heard it in a podcast. I don't remember. But tapeworms can go to your brain. Hmm. Isn't that terrifying? I heard about that actually recently. Ugh. I've been watching a lot of House lately. It's not. It's not good if you have. I <laughs> thought they were <laughs> isolated, <laughs> isolated to the gut. I heard uh, what I read about was because uh, I saw it in house and I actually looked it up after. But like the different, there's different types of parasites that have like uh, like they shed like shells as mm. they get bigger, like a skin almost like a snake. Ugh. Yeah, and so that is like that might not break apart and that can get s like stuck in your system and like fly around and end up in your brain, end up in your in Ugh. your heart and like weird thing. Yeah. Oh my god. S special, but what's interesting is for the most part, I would think that stuff is staying in the outside of your body air quotes because like the digestive tract is not in the like in your system system mm. it's in like it's like in the hole that is well, not you <laughs> i guess if they break through a barrier 
I don't know and how. Just, though. Just maybe there's a sometimes there's like micro um, cuts and tears. It, yeah, tears and even. Yeah, have like an problems, ulcer would be yeah. a big one, and then it hits the bloodstream, and then fuck. Skeleton agrees. Yeah. It jiggles a little bit. There's a f- there's a video of this frog. Uh, f- he had it was just chilling. It was like one of the you don't have Instagram, eh? No, there's a real there's some cool pages there. So there was one Joe used to put pu- to promote like crazy called Nature is Metal. Oh yeah, yeah. You said that. I used to talk about that a lot. Oh, it's I I still go on it like weekly just to see because <laughs> you get humbled by what you see because there's the natural world is so fucked. I, I got a friend on Facebook that shares shit that like is really graphic. Yeah, just like, like a in headless the headless nat- animal. Yeah, yeah, like a some kind of predator eating something. Oh else. man, that uh, he's probably getting it from like that kind of page. Yeah. Because there's like footage, like you're just looking at a beautiful baby uh, gazelle, let's say, or a little deer, and then it just gets snatched by a lion, just like that, for no reason. <laughs> and you're just, you're, you're just swiping through, you're like, oh, next. <laughs> but <laughs> Horrible. It's horrible, but it's reality. It's th- it's Reality's th- fucked up, bro. Yeah. So it's nice, it's both, it's everything, right? Yeah. <laughs> but then, I don't know, man, just, when you're not used to it, anyway, your point. Yeah, but like you said, when you're not used to it, you, you have these false concept uh, false perceptions of what nature is and that can that's that just becomes a fear you know when you're not used to it it's like essentially we're just like acclimating to the horrors of life like one trauma at a time essentially (laughs) 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 yeah i'm not wrong i don't know that (laughs) sounded weird when i said it but it's true that's like i don't know that's what it's like a callus i guess Mm. i know the saying someone is callous is a negative thing but like it's Sometimes strength just comes f- from exposure. Strength only comes from exposure. Yeah, and uh, it's funny that it sometimes looking at these videos, you get gr- you get gratitude out of out of it. Because <laughs> you're because you're not you're not part of that murked. cycle. Yeah. But think about how fucked that is. It's like you see a, a little deer get snatched by a lion, and you have gratitude for not being a part of that. It, I have I get a lot of contradicting thoughts. Well, I don't know contra- like. I just I try to I, t- I I I see a lot of different angles simultaneously and I'm just like like this is this deer never had to worry about shit couldn't comprehend the concept of worry you know it's just bouncing around like a fucking jolly animal and then death I think you're wrong I think that deer is only worrying yeah but if you're always ch- fucked up like if you're always stressed out are you never stressed out uh well, you know, I like mean, that's the, that's it's your baseline, but your body is in a complete chaotic state all the time. Okay, but is it? Because because we're mm. worrying crazy hairless monkeys. I like you see a cat, it jumps in between sympathetic and parasympathetic mm. effortlessly. That's it true. It will one minute murder a bird, and then uh, five seconds later, like sleep. Like it'll just it'll just close its eyes and be like, "This is the best day of my life. I'm just gonna s- lay in but the sun." And yeah. then you make a sound, and it jumps twenty feet, and fucking <laughs> runs away. <laughs> It's just so fast. But here, here's here's my thing. We hold on, like we don't we don't shake it off. You know, we carry the memories. But here's my thing. There is a state of stress that they they're in because if you look at a domesticated animal like a dog, they're just chilled out all day. And then if you put a, a dog in like in the natural world, it's I gonna. I think you're making my point though. I might like be because a wolf. It's in its natural be, state. Yeah, like yeah. a wolf might be like. But he's also apex predator. That's that's what I'm saying though. Like your dog is going to get at least like antsy just with loud noises. Yeah. Whereas a wolf will be like staring down another animal that might kill it and be like what's going on here? You know, like <laughs> like a like a But that's where like you're a yoked fucking gym guy who's just like you want you want to go. But that's it? where you're missing it because that wolf is an apex predator, so it's able to get in and out of parasympathetic and sympathetic because its f- risk of death is a lot lower than a prey animal that's pretty much eating grass. So you're saying like a squirrel who is like obviously agitated all the time <laughs> is like like never like maybe they do they ever we could probably google this. <laughs> you know like are they do they ever yeah. like other than when they sleep and like do they dream like do they do they go to into deep sleep like do they can they not relax like is that their deal? <laughs> <laughs> like is that how they live at all? Well, their def- eyes are even like of this, so there's in d- case yeah. they get eaten. But like, that's oh. why they get so excited. Like when you see people feed animals in nature, like when they start feeding, uh, you, you know, like if you go on a hike, it says like don't feed the the local animals because then they're gonna keep coming back, right? I think those are like the moments where it has like sympathetic nervous system where it's safe and there's abundance. But other than that, it's just in pure panic all the time. 
I don't know, man. I feel like they're so weary, you know? Like, if you're, if, like, you know, you walk through a park and you, you make, like, sounds to a squirrel, they're going to run up to you because they know, they recognize you. That's not really nature, though. That's, like, but I'm saying, like, they're not, nature, they're not relaxed in that moment. The, as soon as you, like, you know, as soon yeah. as you, as soon as you, like, fucking juke them out or something, like, you do any kind of flinch or something, they're up a tree, like, up, like, in five seconds. Yeah. Maybe you're right. Maybe they're just always wigged out. Well, like if you're a prey for animal, for sure, you have to be. Because if you're too relaxed, you're not alert. You you have to be in the par- in the sympathetic nervous system. You have to be. Maybe when they're, like, drinking water. It, where they find a safe spot. Yeah. But I'm saying, like, 90% of their life is danger. <laughs> so they're always fucking on the edge. I love seeing them, like, eat something. Like, they, they're they're always, like... About to shit their pants, <laughs> yeah. they just they just like <laughs> lean in and they're like, "I am so vulnerable right now." And you just no matter what angle you capture the the, the imagery at, yeah. they look like they're gonna fucking crap their pants. They're just and they just like grab a leaf or like <laughs> yeah. they, just start, they just start you know eating. Or it's drinking. like you said it. Like even if you feed a squirrel, like he'll come to you, but as soon as you make a movement, he fucking panics because his threat is not. Uh, anything short of getting murdered. I saw a, I saw a squirrel walking like a month ago, and I'll never forget it because I've never seen that before. Just <laughs> it was just strutting like slowly, like a like a like a dog down the street. And I was like, <laughs> like usually it's like burst, burst, burst. Look around, look around, burst, <laughs> burst, burst, and then just like maybe hops. Like yeah. you know when they do like the pew pew pew. Yeah. And it's like the cutest thing ever. But they're they're like, huh, what's that? What's that? What's going on? And then like up the tree and spinning and like this one was just like. And then it sees me, and I was like, <laughs> it just starts going backwards. I was like, why are you, are you old? Like, I tried to rationalize it. Like, why aren't you squirreling? You're a squirrel. <laughs> so, I don't know, man. I actually want to look this up now. Yeah. How did we get on this topic? Well, so it was all so coming back to nature is metal and that the video with the frog I wanted to just mention about the parasites. So. Wait, Okay. Because we were yeah, going we from tapeworm all the way to parasites, then to nature's metal. Yeah, we flew off. But it was all essentially this whole rabbit hole was to talk about this video from nature's metal. It was a frog, and he was just like someone was filming his face, and you just see like this white parasite eating his inside of his eye, just like squiggling around eating his eye, and that was fucked. And it made me, made me realize like that was a moment of gratitude. I'm like, holy shit! Like that's. Thank God for technology because that's where we would be if you get like a parasite. <laughs> it was just swirling in his eye and he couldn't do shit about it. There's no modern medicine. That <laughs> I don't know why that just fucked me up a little bit. <laughs> like, yeah, it fucked I me up too, man. <laughs> I didn't even see it. You just told me about it and I'm just like, no. And like we had this talk pre, pre-recording. pre Like we have to give some appreciation to the pharmaceutical industry. Like some of these drugs, these anti-parasitic drugs and all these surgeries and things you can do to make our lives easier got to give some tip the hat to them because if you had a parasite in your eye uh and there was no solution life would be pretty brutal get that shit out man i'll take the pills i'll take a (laughs) fucking (laughs) injection in my asshole (laughs) whatever you got to do get it the fuck out it's it's crazy to think because like the eye is like this liquid sack you know so it's like i just picture something like like swimming in it. Oh, it was going like chaotic in his eye. <laughs> just like every Never direction. Never show me that. I gotta find it for you after this. Never, <laughs> ever show me that. I don't. I'm like squeamish lately, man. Oh, that one's a tough one. Uh-huh. Do you find it funny? The older you get, the more squeamish, squeamish you become for these kind of videos. I think some stuff might like hit you. Like something happens and then like you you process it differently or it's just like more real. I think sometimes mm. we feel like as kids we don't. There's process more association, things. I think. Yeah, there's yeah. Th- that's uh, that's pretty much it. And yeah. it, like you, it just means more. Mm. You know. Yeah, because I used to look at some fucked up shit when I was like 12, 14, 12 to like sixteen. I didn't want to think about that fucking like just four chan, random like fake files <laughs> on on LimeWire or, or whatever. And you just <laughs> you just see like a beheading. You're like, what the fuck? And then the best is like people coming to school and they're like, did you see the beheading <laughs> video? And I'm like, why are you excited? And no. <laughs> and, th- and I'm and they're like, and here, look. And you're just, fuck. I don't know. Yeah, but now like, uh, I can't really watch that stuff. It really, it fucks me up. It should. 
Like when you're a yeah. kid, I think you're just m- like curious, and the morbidity is not even like the point. You're just like, what? And there's also like a cool factor mm. where it's like you're not supposed to see this. You're not going to see this on TV. They're not even allowed to swear for fuck's sake. Like it's mm. you know. So you you feel like a, I don't want to call it. It's not as simple as rebellion, but it's like yeah, you're kind of like looking outside the normal parameters. It's, it's like a Pandora's a box almost. You know, it's like this censored world, and then there's yeah. like there's like all this other side available and it's it's it is exciting you know it's like a toy box for a kid it all sorts of new emotions come to the table it's just experiences yeah but it's also cheap it's also like at the at the click of a button on Mm. a screen like there's a there's a there's an ease to it no matter how horrifying it can be and, and even traumatizing you know i remember one time like i'll never forget this but like this girl just got like shot in the head i don't know i don't remember what exactly what the footage was i th- i immediately closed it because mm. i was like that's not what i wanted was it like a security camera i think it was like hostage footage oh. it was really yeah. fucked up and i was like i was like that was real like i like yeah. it slowly dawned on me and i was like like i just felt my brain go like huh like yeah, i yeah. just felt the trauma seep in and i was like oh death like you know like you're young it's not real like I, some people for me i didn't s- i didn't see a lot of death like in terms of like family members mm. or, or i mean pets i guess i had like so many dogs but th- i don't know it's different obviously when a human dies when someone like you you relate to it you know yeah i was really young when a family member died and it was like i hadn't gone to a lot of funerals my grandfather only died recently on my mom's side well recently there's a couple of you know like an aunt here mm. and like some people maybe i'm not super close with and it gets you thinking you know but to see even even my pets like you don't often see them die in front of you i think that's only happened to me like twice or three times yeah but like i don't know it's uh it's it's very like i want to use the word grounding because that can seem positive and it's like ooh, you know i'm just i'm 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 off in the air. I need to ground myself, but this is like sinking. <laughs> this is yeah. grounding, but like it's heavy. Yeah, it's grave. Well, it, it's say. it's a harsh reminder that this is finite, you know. And it's you get caught up in the story, and just you know, theoretically, you know intellectually that you're gonna die, but then when it happens so close, whether it's a pet or a family member, obviously it's like a bigger deal. Mm. But mind you, a pet's still a big deal. But it kind of it can <coughs> be. It put, puts a halt on the momentum of life, and then you just realize, whoa, you know. You think that's innate? Like, ju- Nate? In Do you think it's innate. <laughs> <laughs> Nate? Is it innate, Nate? <laughs> Hold on, I got to burp, like, so bad. Whoa. Yeah. Like, is there a chance for a cultural reintegration of, you know, finality like i don't know how else to put it or is it really just is there something you know because we want to be conspiratorial and think that we can have fears natural or artificial promoted and inflated to the point where we're more easily controlled we we will be directed to not do certain things to buy certain things whatever you want to whatever rabbit hole you choose but is there an is there like a oh my god point at some point where you just have to be told like you know the gift of language gives you so much complexity as an individual mm. it can be bottlenecking in some ways i i think as well but it's way more useful than not it's yeah. so much better to have it so then you just have this complex understanding of the things within life and then someone tells you hey like think about the outer perimeter of your existence as much as possible it's going to end and then you're l- and like, uh, is there is there a, uh, some kind of is that ever easy? Is that ever going to be easy? Psychedelics, bro. So you're saying we got to give children psychedelics? <laughs> well, for <laughs> children, it's just a concept that they won't really understand because it's so abstract. Children are psychedelic, <laughs> but yeah, they're already <laughs> tapped into. The, they're so fresh into this dimension. They're like half in and out. That's what I wonder. Like if a like if a kid just goes like, oh, people die. Like it's easy. Like but they are they just ignorant? You know, are they just nations <coughs> in their in their childness? Like they have less, you know, like less associations, less feeling of well loss. There's less conditioning. Less. Con- that's what I'm asking. Yeah. I'm wondering if, if that's natural, like 
do we, you know, like, I remember the movie uh, Avatar mm-hmm. with the blue people, because there's two avatars. <laughs> there's the last airbender and there's the James Cameron one. But I think uh, the James Cameron one is is what pretty much everyone thinks of when you say Avatar. Really? Not pretty my big. friend circle. Oh, no? Okay, <laughs> anyway, so the blue people one. <laughs> um, there's, there's, you know, there's this whole glorification of like this nature-based tribal, like beautiful, you know, like the blue people, whatever. Mm. So when they, when they, when they're, th- th- their mentality or, or or whatever of death is seems like really more um, accepting of like the circle mm. of life or whatever. But they were still depicted to be like in shambles. You know, they lost somebody and that was painful. And mm. I like maybe. I feel intuitive intuitively just as from through my experiences that that it's always going to be sad when sadness is just an emotion it's just a way to interpret change mm. you know it's just a signal so it's it's random things can make you sad yeah. and the death of someone maybe in some odd ways could make you happy I don't really understand how uh other than if they're suffering or if you really zoom out into like the the you know the 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 need for things to end or the the the, the recycling of of matter into whatever the machine of earth is that that doesn't seem like much of a consolation you just like you you're someone you care about is gone mm. and that just there's nothing about that that doesn't suck yeah and you just have to kind of i don't want to say lie to yourself you have to you have to remember that it's not all bad you know that you had good moments those moments are moments they're not gone just because they're in the past they don't dictate the future. The pr- the sadness you have now doesn't dictate the future. It just kind of colors your understanding of reality, and then you feel more mortal, which is more true to to the th- the three D reality that we inhabit. And then you grow as a person. Like I yeah. don't know. It seems so positive, in a in it a can strange be. way. It can be. But it, like, don't say that shit at a funeral. Obviously, <laughs> like <laughs> 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 you just go on this rant at the funeral. That's what. I, but that's my point. But like, that's th- you know we ha- we hide hearses now. It's like a white truck. It used to be like this long, fancy looking thing. But that's these are bigger problems. This is the disconnect from the spirit. Disconnect from from ritual. Disconnect from connection. And that's why a lot of these things that happen. There's not much. Of, there's kind of like a hush hush culturally like to just not talk about it and or not face these kind of things i mean look at at least in my family like a lot of our issues we kind of just suppress (laughs) you know we don't really talk about and it if there was a better connection to spirit and self these things would be a lot easier to bring to the table and talk and i think that's as collectively as a society like a city because cities are great examples of disconnect society that when something traumatic happens, it's like a, a freak out. You don't really know how to respond collectively. And then you see that manifest in so many different things. It's funny that, like, it soun- it's going to sound so cliche and obvious when I say it, but, like, you're, s- you're describing this depiction of a, of a um, let's say, a blindness towards the spiritual aspects of life. And that directly leads to, a, like, a bigger ego. And not really in a sense of like inflated uh, self worth or something. I don't. Uh, I don't know. However you interpret ego, but really like a lack of foresight. Mm. You know that expression: "We're not inheriting the earth from our parents. We're borrowing it from our children." Mm. Like that is. Both of those are true, oddly enough. But it's like you need to think of it. You need to think in a bigger cycle. You need to think that humanity is something you're part of. And something you're you're towing, but is also pushing you forward. It's very confusing, but it's like we are so wrapped up in, well, we, you know, some parts of the world. I don't know, whatever. Some cultural things. Some some pockets of society are just really wrapped in. What do we What are we gonna do in the next five, ten years, mm. twenty years, thirty years? Like now, we're trying to project a little bit forward because of I don't know, like the, the climate change thing but also because it's starting to hurt people's bottom line or because it's starting to become uh it's start like people are starting to boycott things there's starting to be a market for it so we're still it's still about commodity it's still about production and there's never just this inherent value in existence which fair to say that that's not enough and that's f- for me that's fucked up mm. 
Because I, I believe that. But I also think it doesn't make sense. That should be enough. But there's, like, so much fun and, and like, there's so much to experience that, that in life, you know, that can be, it's about growth and pressure and discomfort. Mm. So just existing, it doesn't have to mean, I guess, that you just sit on the couch and do nothing, obviously. But it's 100% like... 100% not. It's... You're existing in all those, all those moments, you know, and that's part of existence. To be to exist is just simply to have this consciousness and be awa- uh, alive and in this reality. But there's so many avenues to this reality. I guess that is enough on that level, you know. I think if you I need peel to away everything, yeah, we need to yeah. we need to work with the duality a bit. Exactly, there, there is We're a society. There is a economy there is all of this these systems that though there's some glaring you know uh problems it's got a lot of oomph you know like we're we're doing some really cool shit yeah i can't even say we the same the same way we i can't say we about the things that have happened in the past like i haven't contributed anything fancy we're still part of the we I guess, but it's yeah. just fun to Humans. watch, it's even if I even if I separate myself from it. It's like wild. It's the craziest thing ever. Uh, think of an animal. If you saw an animal kingdom doing what we're doing as a collective, like we'd kill them. <laughs> we, like, I, like think dr- I think Rogan talked yeah. about. It. It's like you would stop them and meet. You'd be like, but no, like no, if no, you no. <laughs> if you were just walking and you f- saw a rock, you lifted it, and then you had like a fucking magnifying glass, and you're just seeing. A concert, uh, like an ant <laughs> concert, like Horton hears a who. <laughs> and the, the, ant, the ants just like this, and there's just lights blasting. You'll be like, "What?" And they the can't. They just can't see. They you. can't they see. They, they can't comprehend just, you. They're just yeah. doing it. Like you'll be like, "What?" And that's just a concert. That's like one millionth of a percentage of what the world can do and offer. It's just like a concert is just like s- one small quarter of this wild reality. And think of how fucking trippy a concert is. This is why I get mad at those people that are like, "Fuck humans." <laughs> like humans are the the shittiest thing about it, pl- like or and it's like you can't you couldn't even conceptualize the hate of humanity without humanity like you're so you're so your mentality but is so it's not a thought it's not sick. a thought it's not a well thought uh, phrase it's just something it's easy to label it's like if you start dissecting it like oh what part of humanity and labels then are fucking toxic bro yeah because once you start pulling it away once you start pulling it away it might be as simple as like oh I just i can't handle greed or something like one it aspect most it's most of those things are emotional re- responses exactly i've been and always you c- and you can feed into it and get angry and that's just emotion hitting emotion there was no real discussion we're kind of describing the, like the cl- like the current climate of media exactly like the current climate the human condition I know, but it's so it's coming to such a head now where there's these big, complicated thoughts that are compressed into these simplified, dumb words. dumbified, stupefied is the best word for stupefied. it. Stupefied. <laughs> what was I saying the other day? And you recently told me it was a Harry it was Potter. It was a Harry Potter uh, spell. Stupefy. But it, but it, like we had a, I said something else, and then you connected it to when I said stupefy. Yeah. I don't remember now. I forgot I the second one. But yeah, that's that's the problem. Stupefy is just a word, okay, guys. When you Fuck fucking condense super intricate complex issues into this little phrase or word or letter or shape it's and like lazy and and it's also it's but like it sugar because it's it, manipulative it exactly it's like it it calls the worst out of us exactly and, it and we it all makes have that it makes things side. become binary and that's yes. the problem and that's just not fair you know i i catch myself i hate to say this because i just want to be the smart guy mm. and I'm, I'm not like it's just amazing how black and white i want things to be and i cannot stop seeing that in myself now and i'm so i'm actually really happy that i notice it now Mm. and it's painful it's kind of making life more psychedelic Mm. you know i'm just seeing things for what they are Mm. and when you do that you see like the abyss you see the you see this thick line that that demarks your fucking your your ignorance and it's terrifying because you don't I want to I don't want to trip and fall physically or metaphorically like into something that's going to hurt me or other people or damage p- like property or make me lose money or like there's yeah. so much to worry about Ju- like a- it's fun I don't know like it's a lot mm. it's it's like w- we've traded like the the dangers and complexities of of like natural predation 
to just the dangers and complexity of like uh, uh, some kind of strange social, uh, creative, destructive uh, power. Like we've we've actually, I feel like we've become more spiritual, a- and it just looks shitty sometimes because there's so like you know we have we just grow up reading books and watching movies and like more than ever we're full of these ideas mm. and we can be really p- pessimistic and apocalyptic but we can also be like utopic and be exactly. like man like to the point where we start thinking how do i get there but it reminds me of that uh the greg lake quote when he was saying when he's at rehab the uh, what was it the like the egos doing push-ups while you're in the rehab. Like remember, you said something like that. Like it's getting stronger. I said that? No, uh, Greg said, said it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I don't remember. Saying like while I'm while I'm having the spiritual experience, like the egos out there getting doing push-ups and pull-ups, getting stronger. And it's like on one hand, we're getting more spiritual co- collectively. It's just think about w- these conversations that we're having and that people tune into, and think of like mindfulness practices and meditation. How abundant is it everywhere now? It's so common. And like think ten years ago, it wasn't the big discussion. But at the same time, the duality of it, that ego, the cultural societal ego is getting stronger too. So now we have like the battle between that the two are growing together and which one's going to get shed off. You remember when we were in the car and I said like it's not like we're going over an edge? Mm. You know, it's not about extremes. Like sometimes you go so far up the extreme that you're like you're not you don't make sense anymore. Mm. Like that, like this, like there's things that are kind of spiritually informed that have run amok. And uh, the first thing I think of is like money. I mean, I don't, I don't understand these systems properly. I don't want to talk about them like I do. But like, there's no intrinsic value to money, and it's been like that for a long time. And that spirit as well. Mm-hmm. You look at a piece of paper, and you as a human, like as a, as like this complex mo- genius monkey, you're like pretending, but you know you're pretending, and you're because other people are pretending, this thing becomes functional but not in any kind of physical way. I mean, okay, it used to be the value of something in a bank or gold or blah, 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 or whatever, and then it, it kind of became... Well, now it's like perceived value. Bullshit. Yeah, well, I, they yeah. say it's like it's tied to oil, and you can look into like the concept of fiat currency and all yeah. these things, and, and eventually we're, gonna, we're going towards this GovCoin thing, and then you can get very conspiratorial. There's, that's, what, that's what I mean about going off the edge, but it, I still find it like a positive shift. You know, we're just exploring an extreme and learning our lesson mm-hmm. in a way that is semi-conscious as a collective, so uh, we can't really stop it. Mm. Which is why I get mad at people when they want people to act a certain way, which is f- ironic because I'm mad at them. <laughs> but th- <laughs> but it's like we're just like you can't tell people what to do, and w- and you d- and we do all the time. Mm. We tell them what language to speak, how to move, how to dress, when to blah blah blah, how to pay taxes, don't drive this way, like. There's so little chaos than compared to what there could be. Mm. And for better or worse, like at least like, you know, there's more people than ever. There's more chance to discover things than ever. I still think we're bottlenecking but ourselves a lot. But and we need like psychedelics. We need to that's br- break that. We need to, we need cacophony. We need but to that's what I'm thinking. What's happening is like we're in the process of it unfolding and growing. It's not a final product and we're just consciously witnessing it. So it's like it's easy to get frustrated and all these things, but I think it's kind of forming as the time goes into its own thing. And that's society, that's culture. And it's just it's con- like you can have a fucking tyrant taking over that 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 uh, mechanism? momentum yeah. mechanism or whatever. It's like an organism that is just forming and that's just like our collective and throughout history, like it could get pushed and shoved and pulled and then it just keeps on forming to the next leader or whatever you want to call it. And to the next great idea, and I don't know. I just we're watching this m- this organism grow. It's almost like a snowball. It's just gro- it's just rolling and rolling and rolling and gathering branches and sticks, and eventually it's clean snow, and then eventually it's fucking dog piss, and it's just this thing's going. And is it heading to a cliff or is it heading like uphill? I don't know, but it's going somewhere. And it's just we're in it, looking at it, and in it, it's just an odd place to be. Yeah, we're like in the most globally self-reflective time in any recent like you know this is what the texts talk about man all the all the ancient texts talk about these times the end of the kali yuga uh there's like in the jewish religion i believe they say like these are closer to the end of times the messiah is coming in the in in the next lifetime or something like that but like all sorts of different texts talk about like these are pivotal moments the law of one is another one 
That's, that's true. But that's then true. I wonder, were they always saying that? Is that's it, actually what I was thinking of before yeah. you even brought it up. Like, yeah. it's, is this is it always like this? Yeah. You know, like if some guy like invents uh, the wheel or fire or whatever, like there's just nothing new <laughs> for like a thousand years. Yeah. So there is this kind of like, are we? Uh, do we always feel like we're on the bleeding edge? Do we always? It's like we I don't probably I don't do know though. If we do. We probably do though. Hi- human right. history is just very repetitive. I mean, look, if you're at the point where you don't know how to make fire and then like you figure it out, then everything's mysterious. Yeah. So you're on the bleedingest of bleeding edge. You're like, what the fuck is that plant? Yeah. That Ted just died because he ate that fucking berry. But what, what the if fuck there's is beyond those mountains? What if there's just something like fire that we haven't discovered yet that would just propel us into this fucking? But I feel like we're like we're we're discovering things constantly, little like chemical combinations or uh, like ruins of ancient civilizations or. Um, yeah. we're finalizing, finalizing, let's say refining, uh, psychological p- and spiritual principles. Mm. We're, we're, uh, we're, we're less attached, like we're, like we're more empathetic, but like not lost in empathy. Like we're so there's, there's, I, I don't know. I feel like really positive looking at it as a whole. Mm. I feel like there's so much, like there's just so much. And I think the, m- like, I, I hate the sound kind of like gross and ignorance but like the more the better mm. just more stuff more concepts more chaos more, more beauty everything yeah throw it in the pot K- it's gonna happen anyway like we I'm may as well you. we may as well like f- uh you know bob for apples try to find the, the good in it i'm with you hey hey yo, we actually gotta get going that's a great way to end it it's a beautiful way to end it <laughs> this was fun man yeah no i was just like welcome fucking back brother water, man. i'm fucking sweaty dude. i don't give a fuck we're ah. brothers we're brothers brothers in arms why do we take so long to do this this was very fun <sighs> beats me man it's not fun We're just the uh, <laughs> yeah it's great <laughs> i love it uh, why did it take so long are uh, you guys having fun because i'm having fun well the fun's over now we, we have to go we're heading to breath work and uh with that's Mathieu. that's gonna be fun he's been on the podcast once uh it's gonna be great I think we're gonna have a good time. I'm I'm like actually worried because every time I do like some good holotropic breathing, I start laughing hysterically and then I start crying. Oh, I'm gonna cry like a bitch today. I I'm feel it. Fucking I feel. I need to cry. It's important to cry, everybody. It really is to release that tension. Just and it down, uh, isn't there a hormone that gets released when you cry? Um, I don't know. There is something that gets released from the eye. It's actually really. Yeah, it's really fascinating. I've never heard of that. Yeah, I, we're gonna check this. <laughs> I wish we had a Jamie Matt. We just pull it up. And just <laughs> yeah, let's like end. It. I feel like we always yank chains. We always say we're ending it, and then we talk like another twenty minutes. Uh, we love you guys. Yeah. Check out our other stuff. We're gonna be back with other things. All that jazz. We got some good guests coming up, but we That's don't even true. know about it yet. But I know there's gonna be some no, good. We got a few in <laughs> mind already. Yeah. Stay tuned and stay curious. Stay curious. Wow. Shake it about.